Unreal Engine 4.20 introduces a lot of large as well as a lot of smaller features. We're going to cover some of the smaller features in this video, primarily covering things like changes to our content browser, as well as changes to the way our blueprints work and the blueprint editors. So let's jump right into it. So to start with, we have a new filter. We actually have two new filters in our content browser, but one of them is here in our filter menu. We can go to filters, other filters, recently opened, and now our top 20 items in this case that we recently opened will show in this filter, which is nice and handy to quickly go back and forth from items. It is adjustable. If we go to our project settings, actually I'm pretty sure it is, nope, it is the editor preferences. And then go to content browser. We now have the number of assets to keep in the recently opened filter, and we can adjust that as you would like. So let's set it to something like five. We should only see five items in our recently opened whenever we use it. Let's go and remove that. Another addition is we now have a few different view options. So now we have search asset class names, search asset path, and search collection names. And what this will do is let me disable them, is it will search through the name, the class type, or the path when you're using a filter. So let's look up something like sound. Well, we have our different sound types here, but nothing is coming back. I know I have some sounds in here. My starter content has some sounds, but you know, I would like to find them. They're in here in my audio folder. It's still not showing up because none of my files are named sound. Well, if I go over here and let's do the class names, now you notice they come up. And if I mouse over and we look at the tooltip, we'll notice it says sound in green because it's looking through the asset class name. Now we can also look for the path and we can look through collection names. The path is handy, for example, I could top in audio, let's go back to here, and anything in the audio subfolder is now gonna show up and you can see that in green. So that's nice and handy to be able to quickly look for things. It also helps you autocomplete. So for example, I could type in blueprint and it's gonna give me back other results with blueprint in it. So I can now I can look up just the widget blueprints, just like that. Our next change is a smaller one. Basically, if we clear out our filters and we look at a UMG widget, we now have two new fields near the bottom. We have tick prediction and tick frequency. This is a nice easy way of knowing if your widget is going to tick. And this is all set up inside of your widget itself. So let's pull up like our desktop widget here. And we'll go ahead and we'll look at our graph and our class defaults. And our tick settings are going to be down here. There we go, under performance. Right now it's set to auto. Basically if we have a tick event, it's going to tick. If we don't, it won't or it's set to never. So in this case of auto, if we look, I don't have a tick event. If we were to compile to save, come back and look, it's gonna show you it's set to auto, but it won't tick. Now, if we change that to like never and I'm compiled, of course we should get the expected result of it will never tick and it's set to won't tick. Or if we have a tick event, so let's go ahead and set this to auto and we'll hook something up to our actual tick event, like a print string. This time when we compile it and we look at it, we'll notice it now says, yes, this will tick. This is letting us know w this widget is gonna tick because we have something firing on our tick event. So it's just a small little nice change to easily check performance. Next thing is gonna be the ability to label our saved colors. So let's go ahead and pull up something that has a color. Let's go, well, all right, this one has a color. And let's go ahead and look at this. Oh, that's a test UI. We need to pull up something that actually has a color in it. So here we go. So we have a color here, and this is a tint, and it's obviously white. Inside of our color picker, we have the ability to save colors. So for example, I can make a green color and drag it up here, and we have a different sets of colors in our saved color picker list. Now, if we want, we can now right click and we can name these. So this could be like awesome red, and this one could, for example, could be cool green. That's green. And what's gonna happen now when you mouse over is you can see the names that you've given them, awesome red and cool green. If you want to remove the name, just right click and enter nothing, you'll remove the label. Now the nice part about this is it's useful for your designers. Let's say you have three different blues, but one of them might be a trim on a car, one of them might be the trim on a spaceship, one of them might be the player's lapel color. You can easily take those colors and name them so that when your designers are using them, they know what the intended use is. Another quick and easy thing is we have the ability to close our tabs that are open on the right. Let's say you've been using something like, let's find our character. So here's our character. Let's go ahead and edit him up. He might have some extra graphs in here. So we have maybe a construction ship 
script graph, or we have some extra functions we've opened up. Now, prior to this, you had the option to close other tabs or close. If you had a bunch of tabs open and you no longer want to use them, you'd have to individually close them. Well, now you can just close everything to the right. So close tabs to the right, and now everything extra is closed. Nice handy little shortcut that you might miss. Now we have two bigger blueprint features. One of them is our bookmarks. The other is our new debug watch window. Bookmarks are a way to quickly and easily, well, go to bookmarks or go to a shortcut inside of your graph. So let's go ahead and open up our main event graph in here. By default, you're not going to have any blueprint, not going to have any bookmarks, with the exception of comments will automatically be bookmarked. Now we can get to it by going to Window, Bookmarks, and it's going to open up somewhere. Feel free to dock it wherever you want. I'm going to go ahead and dock it over here by my Details panel, my, my Blueprint panel, I guess. And it's going to show you, well, our Blueprints, Blueprints, Bookmarks. Like I said, by default, you can jump to any comment node easily. So let's go to here, and it will automatically jump us to any of those. That can be disabled by clicking the View, Show Comment Blocks, and now you no longer see those by default. Any other bookmarks you may have set up, for example, I have one here called a construction bookmark. You can easily go to it. Now, my construction bookmark is in another function. If you don't want to see other ones, you can just do show bookmarks for current graph only. You'll notice now we only see this bookmark. If I go to my event graph, now we see our comment block only. And we don't see the one in the function. We'll turn that one back off. To create a bookmark, it's pretty simple. Find what you want to bookmark. So let's say I want to be able to easily get back to my entire graph. I'll go ahead and set it up how I want it. Click the star icon for a bookmark. We'll name it Entire Graph, and we're done. Now we have an entire graph bookmark. And we can go back to that from anywhere. I could be inside of here. Oh, I need to go back to my entire graph, and now I'm back to my entire graph. These bookmarks are for this blueprint only. You're not going to see blueprint bookmarks in other blueprints, and they are stored locally, so they're not going to affect the blueprint itself, and they're not going to screw up anyone else when you sync. They are your bookmarks stored locally for you. Our last new item is going to be our blueprint watch window. This is our new debug window. So let me close those down, open my character up again. We're going to go to window and we're going to go to debug. And now we have a new window. That's our debug window. By default, it's going to show you any watches that you may have set up. In this case, I have two watches set up and I have a breakpoint set up. This is a breakpoint. It's got a little inactive breakpoint node. It's got a little icon. This is a watch. It's got a little eyeglass. Now, what are those? Well, let me dock this up here. We'll go back to here and we'll look. And well, here is my breakpoint that I've set up for debugging purposes. I'll remove it. We'll go back. It's gone. And I have a watch set up. You'll notice this says watching float axis value. Well, I want to know, for example, whenever my keys are pressed and I want to know if this is actually working. So I've right clicked and I've told it to watch. Well, that was watch this value. And now it'll show up. Let's do this one as well. So now in my debug, I can now see the values of these when I am debugging or testing or playing. We'll go ahead and play. Now, this is where it's kind of a pain in the butt. Unfortunately, well, let's actually, we need to play from here and make it easier. This watch window, even if I drag it off and move it somewhere else, I'll move it off screen. You can't see it. When I go back to here, it disappears. It is, well, it's debugging this blueprint, so it's going to stay with that blueprint. So a way around it, just drag off that blueprint, move it somewhere else. We'll move this over to the side so we can see our debug window. And now you can see we have an execution trace, which I'll show in a second. And then we have our watches. So here we can see our input access event and our input access event. We can see our values here. If I was to start using it, now you'll see them changing. As I use my keys for my different events, we are seeing our values in real time being displayed. And this is useful. It's like a traditional code debug watch window where we can see things in real time rather than having to watch the execution flow. Now, speaking of execution flow, if I was to go ahead and click my execution trace, well, it's going to slow down my machine because it's now 100 times a second, whatever my frame rate is, showing me what is going on. And you can see right now what's going on is all of these events are ticking, and you can see the time it's ticking. My add movement input node is ticking. My input access move forward is ticking. All of these events are firing, and this is the actual order it's firing for this blueprint. And if we went back to our event graph, we, of course, can see that. We can see that we have all of our different input access is firing off. Our mouse input access is firing off. These ones, if I was to do something like push some keys, we'd start seeing those pop up on the event trace. It's a little hard to see because it's going so quickly. It's firing them all off. But this is useful, for example, if we're inside of our event graph, and we'll go ahead and debug, and we'll put a breakpoint here. 
once it's broken, you can now actually go back and see the exact trace. And you can drill down. You can jump to any of these nodes. For example, okay, well, this one fired. Where is it at? You can click on it, and it's going to take you right to that event. Something that might help with that is if you take your debug window and dock it to the top here, you could actually see your graph and your debug window, and you can actually click and go back through each of them. So it's nice and handy. It brings the blueprints system kind of more in parity with a traditional code-based environment by adding in our nice debug window where we can watch things and we can have our event execution trace. And that's it. That was just a few smaller changes inside of Unreal Engine 4.20.